out of order, I don't think, for someone to stand and give the Lord praise this morning with what He's doing in your life. Somebody just want to give the Lord praise this morning? I will. You see, my daughter got married yesterday and uh, had a bad surprise. Is her biological dad walked behind my father-in-law down the aisle and made me feel about yay big. He, I wasn't told beforehand or anything about it. Pastor pulled me off into the office about not making a scene. And, and you know, God got me through that wedding ceremony. I didn't. I was able to talk nicely to the pastor afterwards and ask him when that changed to what was going to happen. God got me through it. But, and it's I. It didn't affect my love for my daughter. You know, I love her with all my heart. That's my daughter. You know, even though she disappointed me and it hurt me. It, you know, I love her. God allows me to love her. Most of all, I love God. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart, PK. Bless your heart. Anyone else? You know, that's a... I'm going to use that as an illustration uh, this morning. Uh, we've been uh, on this subject before, a few months back, about five five sermons we we talked about the sermon on the uh, on the mount talking about the beatitudes and i know i'm probably going to upset some people back here by getting down and walking around but uh, i I'm, i want to get down here and talk to you for a moment because as a father we get sometimes or a mother we get sometimes hurt by our children but we still love them you and I sometimes hurt our Heavenly Father. But <laughs> the junction, junction, what's your function? He still loves us. You hear what I'm saying? He he still loves us. And and he wants to he wants to help us through those difficult times in life. You know, some of you have had some difficult times here lately. Hey, man, you've been through some difficult times. We've all been through some difficult times lately. But I want to tell you, God is still on the throne. Amen. God is still concerned with your life and my life this morning. But as I said this morning, uh, we we a few weeks back, we had uh, talked about... Uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and and I think it was like uh, five weeks or so uh, that we uh, had, uh, had mentioned about uh, the the Beatitudes, uh, how they are considered uh, conditions or attitudes of the Christian life uh, that are essential for us to live a holy life, for us to. Uh, live happy lives in fact we we talked about in those messages that Jesus put a significance on those passages of scripture by beginning each of those be attitudes with the word blessed or happy or some version of that word uh, for each of those verses that that we we studied he began those those verses that way uh, once again uh, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they would that for they shall be what filled okay and so blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God and blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sakes for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and blessed verse 11 blessed are they blessed are you when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake and rejoice, be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. 
For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. And so these were the guidelines that Jesus gave us. That group of people who gathered in, but he gives it to us. And it, 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 they are guidelines that deal with the inner person. The inner person, Randy, we, we were talking about uh, holiness and, and, and living a holy life in our Sunday school lesson this morning. And, and that's what it is. And, and, and sadly, as Randy mentioned, a lot of churches have gotten away from the holiness message. And if we ever do as a church, folks, we're going down the wrong path. And, and so these are guidelines that deal with living a holy life. In other words, we are, we are to be something before we can do anything. We are to be something before we can do, can do anything. And Jesus is telling us that, that, that we are to put our lives together from the inside out. It has to start on the inside, regardless of the situation around us, regardless of the circumstances around us. We are to we are to uh, uh, live our lives that are more enjoyable because of what has done, been done on the inside of us. regardless of those external circumstances, if God has changed our hearts inside, things will be different on the outside for us. It, it is important to remember that Jesus told us that we are able to experience happiness regardless of outward conditions. And therefore today, we are going to move from the B attitudes and do a, start a series of messages where we're going to learn more about how we are to live a holy life and live that life with more joy and happiness. In fact, by 548, it says this, Therefore ye shall be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. And when we're talking about that perfection, we're talking about being what God wants us to be in love. Randy, the, the, that verse in Colossians, above all these other, other things, put on love. <laughs> Do things in love was our Sunday school lesson this morning. And so as we look at the this, this Sermon on the Mount, we're going to look at the lessons of living from that sermon, first of all, by uh, reading the passage of Scripture and finding out what God wants in our lives. Stand with me, if you will, as we read from His Word this morning, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to be reading from the Authorized Standard Version this morning, King James Version. Ye are salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel but on the stand, and it shineth unto all that are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Father, as we look into your word more uh, closely this morning, may you guide us and direct us in what you want us to, to apply to our lives and may we be obedient to that tug on our hearts this morning for it's in Christ's name we pray and everyone said amen you may be seated both of these statements are positive challenges for you and me 
to do something about the world in which we live. We can complain about the state of our nation. We can complain about our families. We can complain about the things going on in our schools, in our communities, so forth and so on. But if we don't act as Christians... In our deeds, not just in our prayers, how do we think things are going to get changed? But this this is telling us this morning in this passage this morning how we are to live our lives in a world. We are to be salt and light. Those are the positive statements that Jesus, red letters in my Bible, that Jesus is speaking to us about this morning. Jesus helps you and me to get our lives together so that you and I may demonstrate his power to the world in which we live. You and I can't change anything without the power of God in his fullness living in our lives. So let's take a closer look at at these two challenges, these two positive challenges this morning that Jesus gives us first by taking a look at the qualities of being salt of the earth. By taking a look at what the qualities of being the salt of the earth involves. Verse 13, Ye are <laughs> ye are the salt of the earth not you should be the salt of the earth i i don't know about you but i've got a salt shaker at home and inside that are some white little grains of salt it is salt in that salt shaker it's not pepper in that salt shaker it's not sugar in that salt shaker it is salt and when i want something to taste a little better or or preserve it is that salt that does the job why because it is salt you my friend if you say i am a christian this morning you and i are saying we are salt you and i are salt it's a statement that jesus is making about you and me and when you talk about salt it has some unique qualities and one of its unique qualities is that salt is a what preservative salt is a preservative it has the capability of preventing decay you hear me salt in that salt shaker has the has the has the uh, a capability of preventing decay <laughs> wow i could just go off right there in into which it is applied it keeps fish fresh <laughs> as the fisherman gets it back to the market we are to prevent listen to folks you and i Ye are the salt. And you are called, no matter where you go, no matter where you live, no matter what you do, you are called to to prevent decay from happening any further in our lives. We can't do, we can't change the past. Amen? The past of the past. We are where we are today because of the past. But where we are today, and we're not happy with it, I know you're not happy with some of the things you got going on in our world today. We can't change the rules on abortion if we don't preserve the Christian value. We can't change the, the lifestyles of individuals, but, but my friends, we can stand for what the family is about and what God instituted in the Garden of Eden so many thousands of years ago. Not millions, but thousands of years ago. Don't give me that million. Don't, get, don't, don't talk about billions. The earth is only a few thousand years old, my friend. I believe in a biblical teaching of what the earth and how it was created. It was created in seven days. You can't tell me that a day is a thousand years is a thousand years of the day, and so one day was a thousand years, and 500 500 years would have been the morning or the daylight, and 500 years of daylight or nighttime 
My friend, there is nothing in this world that would survive in 500 years of darkness. A day is a day when you're talking about creation. It was literally seven days of creation. Don't let young people, don't let what they tell you in school about creation and about how old the earth is because I, I dispute it with, with, with what God's Word talks about and how I believe in a biblical uh, uh, teaching of, of the creation of the world. But that salt has a way of preventing decay and you and I are to do the same thing in our society which we live in. I mean, I mean look around, folks. We've talked about this Wednesday night some. Our world today... It, I mean, we could, you could almost say it's running rampant with sin. That, that it is, that sin is overwhelming. But I want to tell you, even though that might be true in your eyes, I want you to consider what this world, what our society would be like if you took the salt, you, God's people, out of the equation. What would, what would this world be like if there was no salt? in our world the second quality of salt is that when it is applied it produces maximum flavor now I get in trouble sometimes because I do like to salt some of my food okay and my grandkids think I'm pretty crazy when I take that nice granny smith app or or the or you know I like the I like the uh, early harvest apple, the July, July harvest, whatever, you know, the ones that turn yellow right about this time in the year. I like them before they turn yellow. When they turn yellow, they're too mushy for me. They're, they're too mushy for me. I like them. With, I, in fact, I used to eat green apples like you wouldn't believe off that, that, that tree in our backyard. And rhubarb, oh, right off the stock. Just, and then take the, take the leaf, peel it back. But you know what I did? My grandkids think I'm crazy. But I put salt on them. No, Randy's shaking his head. He don't like the idea either. I put salt on my green apples. Oh, I love it. Salt on my rhubarb. I love it. Salt on my watermelon. I love it. I love it. Okay? Why? Because it makes my food taste a little bit better. At least that's the way I think. It maximizes the flavor of those, of those foods. I mean, it just seems like food tastes a little better with a little bit of salt. And exposure to Jesus brings out the very best in life and flavors the lives of those around us. You can't tell me this morning that you wouldn't be would you wouldn't you would rather be around somebody who is loving and positive and encouraging than somebody who is the opposite of that amen we want to be and and so you and I as salt we are to expose the world around us with the love of Christ and the third quality of salt this morning is that it creates thirst. Amen? It creates a thirst. I mean, when we live out uh, the Beatitudes, we should be creating a thirst in those around us. When, when they see us living those Beatitudes in our life, I mean, everywhere that Paul went, people either tried to kill him or they fell in love with him. I mean, it was one or the other. Uh, he and, and and a lot of times and he it was for the better. I mean, he he is one of the greatest evangelists around that, that, that have ever walked the earth besides Jesus Christ, in my opinion. I mean, Billy Graham was pretty good, but I'm telling you what, Billy Graham had an advantage you could get on the TV to. Paul went in person, and we are today what we are today because of what Paul done in his lifetime. And so you and I got to understand that being salt, you and I are a preservative. You and I 
produce maximum flavor in the world around us and you and I should create a thirst in individuals to know why we are like we are and we then can lead them to Jesus Christ. The second positive challenge other than being quality of, of, of being salt in the, of the earth is that you and I are to look at our assignment to be the light of the world, verses 14 through 16. You and I have an assignment to be the light of the world. Ye, again, ye are what? Light. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp and, and put it under a bushel, but on a stand. And it shineth unto all that are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Folks, you and I, just like that salt and that salt shaker, you and I are to be that light bulb in the, in the lamp that brings light to our world. And a light cannot be hidden. The nature of light drives back darkness. What If we was to shut off all lights in this room today, and in fact, if, 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 if any of you were in the military, you understand what it means to be in, I mean, especially those in the desert that, that served over in Afghanistan or, or, or Iraq or any of the, the, war, the places there. I remember a gentleman back in the Valley View Church, uh, he, he talked about uh, going out of their little uh, building that they'd had to, to go to the restroom, and as soon as you shut that door, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face what drives back darkness what drives what what changes that what 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 makes it able to see in conditions like that there's only one thing light light is the only thing that can, can drive back darkness light is the only thing that can work in a dark world and people who live up to the challenge that Jesus has given us push back darkness they stand up for what is right they stand up for the things of God and the stronger the light the greater amount of darkness we can penetrate that's why we have to be united that's why we have to be one in the body of Christ because there's nothing that can drive back the darkness of this nation than the body of Christ coming together as one and being a light to a world today. Christians are to be that, that, that beacon of light at, 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 at airports that give directions to safety. I can remember flying in the, at, at nighttime in, 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 around the uh, Parkersburg area and, 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 and you get out away from the city and things get a, well, you, you, it gets a little dark and, and, and yet it was so nice to see that beacon at the airport. I can remember one time, uh, I won't say, yeah, well, <laughs> Mr. Nutter, let's just put it that way. Decided coming back from Wheeling to Parkersburg that he would let me have a try at flying little OH 58, little, the little helicopter. And so I said, Yeah, I'll do that. He said, All you have to do is fly toward those lights there on the horizon. <laughs> chugging along, chugging along, and doing pretty good, I thought. And, and all of a sudden, he says, Toby? I said, yes. He, he said, uh, do you see those lights? I said, yeah. He says, where they're at? I said, over there. <laughs> Light guides us. They didn't guide me. I was going to do the dark. But they're there to guide us. You, are, you and I are there to guide the darkness around us. This is a call, my friend, to positive living. This is a call to holy living. We are to live with such joy in our hearts and in our lives 
that we automatically drive back the gloom and the doom of our world. You see, as the light of the world, you and I are to demonstrate that when struggles come, people can find hope and help through our lives. Being salt and light to the world around us will bring happiness and fulfillment into our lives as well when we sense the difference because we have made a, a, a impact in peoples around us, their lives. It will bring happiness and fulfillment. There's nothing more satisfying knowing that you're in the center of God's will and that he has used you to make a difference in somebody's life. There's nothing like it. It's like the it's like the light keeper in the lighthouse on that dark and stormy night and he's at the height of the cliff rocks all around his his lighthouse and that lighthouse is there to help guide the big ships to safety from avoid to help them avoid crashing their vessels into the rock cliffs my friend that's what you and I are to do we are to guide people safely home and so this morning I challenge you those of you who believe in Jesus Christ that you are to be the salt of our world to keep it and prevent it from decaying any further. Get involved. Stand up for what is godly. Don't let our young people fall into the trap of what schools and societies. Be careful. Be careful what textbooks are saying today. Be careful where they are going on social media today and what's taking place in their quiet times at home on that little phone sometimes that can be used for good but also a hindrance to our growth in Christ. You and I need to be that salt in our world. And I also challenge you this morning if you call yourself Christian this morning, to be the light of the world around you so that those who are struggling can find their way to safety. Amen. To find their way to safety. I don't have a closing song this morning, but if someone has something that popped in your mind would you would you let it out this morning we'll have Darlene come and play it for us and I'll lead you I mean Randy will come and lead you uh, anything come to mind in a closing song uh, Randy you're right down the track I was thinking brother I thought about that one as well what page is it on holiness under the Lord No, it's it, 503, 503, holiness under the Lord. Randy, come and lead us this morning. 503. Everybody stand this morning as we, as we close in song this morning.